Hi, my name is Monique Nelson and I work with Flexible Solutions, the original liquid pool cover manufacturer. This video will walk you through the process of installing and programming a heat saver liquid solar pool cover system. It is very easy to follow and I hope you enjoy the walkthrough. As we walk through the pump room, I'm going to go over some important details. First of all, before you begin any installation, be sure to shut off your pool's main circulation pump and then make sure to isolate the injection site with the available shutoff valves. This will eliminate any possibility of any major leaks. When you examine your pump room, you want to choose the location to hang the pump unit. A location away from foot traffic and as near as possible to the injection point is preferred. Also, you may want to get close to a grounded three-prong electrical outlet, otherwise you will need to use an extension cord. There are a few important considerations regarding the pump's location, as well as the location where you should drill into your pool's return supply line. Here are a few cautions. Note that we do not hang pump unit outdoors without a rain cover to protect it from the elements. We also must be sure not to locate the pump unit near open flames. Finally, try and ensure that the injection site is after the pool circulation pump, filter, and any other chemical injection points. Today we are installing a heat saver kit. With that kit, you will receive four 35 ounce bottles of heat saver and a wall mount, you will receive an automatic metering system, an installation kit, which includes two flex tubes, one injection fitting with built-in check valve, 25 feet of PE tubing and some extra parts. You will also get screws and anchors for mounting the system, an all-weather cover, A parts assembly that includes a cap and adapter and bottle insert for your bottles. And finally, the installation manual. That's what you get in a heat saver kit and that's all you need to complete the installation. You will also need a few tools to complete your installation. You'll need an electric drill, a 21 64th drill bit appropriate for the material of your return line, a 1 8th 27 NPT thread tap, a multi-bit screwdriver, and lastly some Teflon sealing tape. To begin, we need to add the peristaltic flex tube to the pump. To do this, turn the two snap pins on the pump head and remove the pump head from the pump. Then using a Robertson screwdriver, remove the single screw from the back, allowing you to remove the back plate from the pump head. Insert the peristaltic flex tube into the pump head and coat with the included lubrication. Once properly lubricated, reattach the back plate and the screw. Then place the pump head back into position and with the snap pins pointing upward, push them into position until they click. To mount your system, you want to have three holes drilled into the wall. From there, you will use your spacer that comes inside of your all-weather cover and your wall mount bracket, which is attached to the back of the pump. With the spacer behind the bracket, you want to screw those into the wall for mounting.
Once all three screws are in place and properly tightened, all you have to do is fit your HS115 pump over top of the bracket. Make sure that it fits snugly and tightly so it will not move if knocked. Next, you're going to want to install the wall mount to hold your 35 ounce bottle in place. Simply screw it into the wall underneath your pump system using the two screws provided. Make sure that it is tightened and your 35 ounce bottle should fit nicely inside. It's now time to tap the line. Once you've identified where you will be drilling into the main return line, shut off the circulation system, close the valves to isolate the injection point. Drill into the top half of the return pipe to avoid excess leaking. Then use the tap to tap the hole and give it threads for the injection fitting. Once your hole is properly threaded, you're going to want to use some Teflon sealing tape around your injection fitting. Once it is tightly taped, you can thread that into the hole you just tapped. The next step is to measure and cut the polyethylene line running from the pump to the injection point. Using the supplied nuts and ferrules, you want to attach the tubing to the right hand side of the pump and to the injection fitting, ensuring the nuts are tight. Next, you're going to want to add the pickup assembly to the heat saver bottle. Simply remove the heat saver cap after giving it a good shake and insert the bottle insert. Make sure it snaps tightly into the lip of the bottle and then screw on the paired cap. Make sure to tighten it very well so that air does not get into the line. This process will be very similar whether you're using a 35 ounce bottle or our 140 ounce gallon jugs. Now you're going to want to run the quarter inch line from the heat saver bottle to the metering system. You're going to want to push the tubing tightly into the cap fitting as shown. Cut the length you need and again use the supplied nuts and ferrules and make sure you screw it together tightly. Use the supplied zip ties to attach the line to the pickup assembly and ensure no air can get into the line. Use the additional supplied zip ties to clean up the line so they are tucked away nicely.
Once your lines are nicely cleaned up, you can plug in the metering system and then prime it to check the lines and check for any air entering the system. To do this, simply press the prime button and hold it down, watching as the heat saver liquid fills the lines, looking for any leaks at the fittings. If you find any air leaks, retighten the fittings. We're now ready to program the system. To begin, you must first enter into the program mode. To do this, hold the program button down for eight seconds. The colon will blink fast and irregularly while the program button is pressed. The whole screen will flash and the colon will stop blinking to indicate that you have successfully entered program mode. The screen display will not change. It will continue to show the current time and day of the week. Once you enter program mode, your first task is to set the clock. Use the hours and minutes buttons to change the time of day. The clock will display P for PM. The HS115 metering system in peristaltic flex tube is designed to move a volume of 3 ounces per minute of our heat saver liquid pool cover. Determine your pool's surface area. The pump needs to run 20 seconds for every 400 square feet of surface area. Moving on, press the event button once. This screen will indicate which event you are entering, in this case event 1. Press the event button again and the screen will show the day and time the event will begin. Change the time that the event will occur using the hours and minutes button. Change the day of the week that this event will occur using the day button. Select all the days of the week so that 1 through 7 appear together on the screen. Once you've programmed when the event will occur, press the event button again. Minutes and seconds will appear in the bottom of the screen to indicate the duration of the event. A heat saver injection schedule should only use one event, which will occur each day of the week. Using the minutes and or seconds button, enter how long the program should run for each day. Remember that the pump injects one ounce for every 20 seconds of run time. When you've finished programming, you can return to run mode by pressing the program button once. Then you want to prime the pump. Ensure you are in run mode. Press the prime button to operate the pump. Hold the prime button until the heat saver liquid has filled the lines all the way to the injection point. If any air bubbles are entering the line at a fitting, tighten that fitting. Your heat saver starter kit is now installed. Make sure you save all the extra parts and the installation manual for future maintenance and leave them with the pump system for your customer. That's all there is to installing one of our heat saver automatic metering systems for liquid pool cover system. Mm -hmm.